Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to decode a Base64 encoded message using the ASP32 and Arduino core. As target port, I'm going to be using an ASP32 Fire Beetle board from the F-Robot. So before we get started, I would like to show you the message that we are going to test in this tutorial. It's basically this Hello World message, uh, and we are going to use this online tool uh, to obtain the Base64 um, message encoded, the base 64 encoded message uh, from this plain text. Naturally, you can play around with other content if you want when testing this code. So, moving on to the actual uh, code, to the actual Arduino code, the first thing we are going to do is including this crypto slash base 64 uh, library because this library has uh, the function that we are going to need in order to uh, do the base64 uh, decoding of our message. So since this, um, this library has some C code that is not compatible with C++, we need to enclose it in this external C block so the compiler can compile the, the whole code. Moving on to the Arduino setup function, the first thing we are going to do is opening a serial connection so we can output the results of running our code and after that obviously we are going to need to declare here uh, the base64 encoded message that we want to decode. Besides that we are going to need uh, an auxiliary variable uh, of this type size t that we are going to use to obtain the output length of the decoded message, of the plain text message that we are going to obtain from decoding here uh, this, uh, uh, this base64 encoded string. Moving on to the actual decoding procedure, we simply do it by calling this base64 underscore uh, decode function. This is a very simple and easy to use function that basically receives three uh, arguments as input. The first argument is the base64 um, string, encoded string, uh, and basically we need to do this cast here to constant sign char uh, pointer because this is the type that uh, this, first, uh, this first argument is expecting uh, and if we directly use just a char pointer um, it will run into a compile time error. Besides that we need to specify the length of the base64 encoded string note that we don't need to be counting the shards one by one it doesn't make sense because we can use this uh, str length function to obtain um, the size of this, uh, of this message and obviously this is uh, much easier to use uh, if you want to play around with other um, with other plain text strings if you change here uh, the value of the encoded message basically it will still work because we are dynamically obtaining uh, the length of the string finally this third parameter is used uh, for us to obtain the length of the plain text message of the output plain text message and basically you need to pass the address of this size t variable that we declared before and the function will take care of assigning to it uh, the length of our plain text message um, and basically you can then use it to print uh, the content. So as output uh, this base64 decode function will return to us uh, the plain text string here. Note that the type is an unsigned char pointer um, but basically we can use it and printing as a print it as a string as we'll see below. So after this, uh, the first thing we are going to do is basically printing uh, the length of the decoded message of the plain text message so we can make sure that it was correctly assigned to this variable, to this output length variable. And then after that, we are going to actually print um, our plain text string. Uh, and to do this, we are going to go a little bit differently that we, we usually do. We usually use this println function to print some content or the print function, but in this case, um, the serial object also offers a printf function that basically it allows us to use these format specifiers. I'm going to leave a link in the description so you can take a, a better look of what the format specifiers are but they basically allows us to um, to format a string um, in very different ways. So and with this we are going to be able to print um, 
the plain text message to the serial port. So we are go not going to need to do any type of code in the main loop function. We can do everything here in the setup function. And I've already uploaded this code to my SP32, as you can see here. But I'm going to run it again. So as you can see, it is printing here the length of our uh, of our uh, plain text message, and the actual plain text message matches the one I've showed you before, um, used in the online tool that performed the base64 encoding. So basically, this is it. This is how we can decode uh, a message. Basically, this base64.h library also offers a functionality or a function to perform the encoding, the base64 encoding, and then if we need, we can reverse it using this function. So also keep in mind that um, this is a lower level library that uh, is available from um, the IDF framework. So this is why we are working with uh, lower level constructs such as strings uh, that correspond to a sharp pointer instead of, for example, using the string class from Arduino. And this is why, for example, when we are printing here uh, this message, you can try it if you are curious, but if you directly print uh, this, the output of this function, this decoded uh, variable that we have stored, uh, it will print a lot of garbage if you just do a serial print LDN of this variable, because basically uh, this function doesn't know where to stop. This function doesn't know what is the size of this string, because this is basically just a pointer. Uh, so basically here you don't have the information on uh, where to stop, so if you try to print this directly it will just print uh, the content and a lot, uh, and, uh, a lot of rubbish. Uh, so basically this is why when we are working at this lower level we need not only to specify the, f the buffer that contains a string, the buffer that contains the data, but we also need to specify uh, the length of this buffer. If you take a closer look at this base64 decode function, the behavior is very similar. Not only do we need to pass uh, the string that we want to decode, but we also need to pass the length uh, of, this, of this buffer, so uh, basically the function knows uh, how to process it. So this is why um, I would like to, to share also that um, we need to be a little bit more careful when working with these lower level uh, libraries from IDF, but we also need to take in consideration that many of the functionality uh, that is available on this SDK uh, library is not yet available in the Arduino core uh, with nice wrappers, with nice classes that we can use uh, in a much simpler way. But the, the amount of uh, functionalities that are available here uh, is really, really big. So I really encourage you to take a look at these lower level libraries because uh, there are a lot of functionalities that we can leverage. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed.